Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode. Uh, this time I'm going to be doing part two of what's on my custom firmware Nintendo Switch. So, this time I'm going to be covering uh, system modules, plugins, overlays, a little bit about overclocking, and a little bit about cheats, and a little bit about 60 FPS hacks. So, right now we have Sonic, Sonic Colors Ultimate, which I don't have a problem with. I, I like this game. It's perfectly fine. But, here I have the Tesla menu, so it's just overlays, you can control different plugins. I have the system overclocked at the moment, so... Status monitor, let's do full. So here you can see I have the CPU overclocked to 1581, and the GPU overclocked to 921. Usually the, the GPU sits at around 768 when docked. But uh, this, the Tegra chip can pull a little bit better. And let's see, where's the temperature? Temperature at the bottom, SOC 55 degrees. That's not bad at all. Perfectly fine. I've seen it go up to 65, 68. That's when it starts getting close to shutdown time. Diablo 2 tended to do that. But we also have the FPS monitor, 30, 30. So let's do a real quick Edison cheat. Where are we? Cheat, cheat, cheat. 60 FPS. Let's turn that on. Now we can go back to status monitor full. And, well, it's not a lock 60 due to the performance of the switch. But we can move a little bit more. It's, this area is a bit heavier because of the grass. So as you see, the FPS is still better. Getting close to that 60. So when you're in areas where there's not too much going on, you can get a pretty good lock 60. Jump. Where's my boost? Oh, okay, that ain't good. Moving on. It's a little hard to see with the overlay there. It keeps telling me to hit the Y button, but I don't have any boost yet, so... Yep, anyways, moving on here. And, oh, there we are. And Sonic died. Okay. Let's get out of this game. So I'm just going to close that out and going to close down status monitor. All right. Here we have. So first thing that I want to go into is the overlays. And the way you bring that up is the L1 button down on the D-pad and click in with the right trigger. And that brings up the Tesla menu. So these are where all of your overlays and plugins are installed to. So for me... I try to keep it as simple as possible. These are the ones that I use the most. I don't want to clutter it with too many because they actually load up while the switch is booting. Well, 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 atmosphere is booting, that is. And because of that, it makes the boot times longer and sometimes it can make it unstable if you have too many. So that's something to keep in mind. When you're updating firmware, you want to kind of do one thing at a time. A lot of the people, they tend to do the auto update all in one installer all in one updater and then they go to reddit and there's so many problems why isn't it booting why is this error coming up well you got to go slow and steady that wins the race when it comes to the switch first thing status monitor so we have options full mini and fps so this fps if you just want to see fps uh, like that but uh, we're just Ah, Alex Kid's easy. I'm going to load up Alex Kid normally, not the homebrew way. So the home menu is a little bit finicky with the FPS. Of course, it's not 255, but it's just a home menu. And now we can see. There we are, 60 FPS on Alex Kid. And this should be pretty well locked. So to get back out of this, so if I try to L1 down, right trigger, nothing, nothing, nothing. The way you get back out of this menu... Both triggers, press in and hold. There you go. Oh, sorry, not triggers. Both analog sticks, press in and hold. And now let's do mini. So the mini one is what I tend to use the most. Uh, it's compact. It gives me all what I need so I can still play the game. So we can see CPU load is at 23%. GPU. Uh, I'm just going to skip this. 33 there we are, GPU at 97% at 537 megahertz. And this game could be overclocked a little more, but I'm not going to bother with that. It's just Alex Kid. It runs fine. 30 FPS. Oh. Something I will mention is that when it comes to the Switch, it runs 
a lot better in dock, uh, sorry, in portable than docked. So when you're doing overclocking and you want to play games, I really recommend playing it portably. Mm, I'd say most people would have a PS5 or Xbox series to play on the big screen, or even just use your computer and get a, get the games on Steam and then connect them. That's how I usually do it, because I only have Switch as my console. Okay, so anyways, let's back out of this, and we're going to do the full menu. So full menu gives you everything. You have FPS, and frequency, shows you the frequency on all the four CPU cores, the GPU load and GPU megahertz. So when you see the GPU load a little bit high, you could try overclocking it, and that'll help relieve some of the stress. But the higher you overclock, be prepared. Your system might crash sometimes. If that happens, don't freak out. It's perfectly fine. Just reboot it. There you go, back to normal. So, let's see here, and then let's back out of this. Back, and we're going to go to Edison Cheats. So, I have many, many, many cheats for this game installed. And one thing I want to mention about cheats, never use them online. I mean, you shouldn't connect your custom firmware switch online anyway, in my opinion. Sorry if that offends you, but... It's too many people just getting banned for stupid stuff. Oh, I accidentally updated. Well, you were playing with fire. Let's do infinite lives. Invincibility on. Okay, let's do invincibility on. So how does this work? If I touch something... Oh, hey, I'm invincible. Oh, isn't that cool? Oh, ah, uh, but it made a note saying that ghosts can still get you. Ghosts can kill. So... Not quite invincibility, but it worked for most things. Let's do invincibility off. Sometimes you have to toggle them off. Usually if you just do on off here, it'll be fine. High jump, no gravity. Let's, what's this do? Whoa, okay, so that, that just hold the jump button makes me fly. Well, that's pretty cool. Sorry about the jump cut there. Couple things I learned while trying to get Emuebo working. Since the latest update, it seems like you have to be using Joy Cons. My DualShock 4, I kept trying to use it with Emuebo, and oh man, there were a lot of crashes. It was getting real angry at me. All right, let's start game. We'll go over here. Amiibo! Scan Amiibo. Okay. All right, here we are. Let's ma let's choose a Shovel Knight Amiibo. Okay, we're going to go with just the good old zero one. Ah, whatever, let's do the gold edition. Okay, gold edition selected. And go. Okay. Ta-da! So, here we are. Scan Amiibo, and there we are. Got it. Gold Shovel Knight Amiibo. Set as player two. Oh, we need player two. Here we are. L and R your controller to join as player one. Okay. And player two now. So I got the controller here. Load that up. And bingo. Okay, good. We are all set. Is it going to work? Well, let me use a Shovel Knight campaign. Disable... Co Okay, fine. We'll do Shovel Knight. Do, 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 do. Oh, wow. And so we're right here at the beginning. For Shovelry. So, this is a real neat way. You can just uh, level up your Amiibo guy. Uh, you can do all your Shovel Knight things. Dig. Oh. Anyway, that's Amiibo now. So... We're going to close out of here. Now, now that I'm on Joy-Cons as player one, let's go to the next one. Sys Clock. So I already showcased this uh, quite a bit. So You can change your performance profiles for overclocking of your Nintendo Switch. You can even underclock if you wanted to do that, but I wouldn't recommend it. For almost every game, I would recommend... 1600 megahertz on the RAM all the time. It doesn't cause any problems whatsoever and it only benefits you. Actually, when the switch is docked, it's always running at 1600 megahertz. 
So you have different profiles here, say when the switch is docked, when it's in handheld, when it's plugged into a general charger, the switch charger, and a power bank. So I'm not running any game right now. These settings, they save per application or per game. So each one that you have running has its own overclock profile. So for me, I always use Alex Kid to run my homebrew. So I have this overclocked all the way up which means if I open up this, the profile for it, oh, okay. oh, and we crashed. Getting a lot of crashes tonight. That's really strange. I'll be right back. All right, so the next thing I wanna go over is sysclock. So that's the overclock manager. And the first thing we're gonna do here is load up Doom. It's gonna go ahead and pause the video real quick while that's loading. All right, so Doom's just about finished loading up the foundry. My favorite level, by the way, mostly because of the Olivia Pierce part with the old school Doom music that comes in. Okay, we're gonna let this finish loading. Uh, important thing to do when you're overclocking, don't fiddle with things in loading screens. It could really mess stuff up. You wanna wait until everything's like right there, good to go. And it's always a good idea to turn off your overclock before transitions of different scenes. So let's see, uh, DualShock works for that. Here we are. It's been a while since I played this. Okay, so what kind of FPS are we looking at here? Status monitor, mini. Uh, 30, okay, it's pretty good. Lock 30, not bad. I'm good with this. Yes, yes, Dr. Hayden. Okay, well, we also have the GPU is sitting at 768. So we're gonna go ahead and just overclock the CPU just a little bit. Now we're gonna go up here. We'll overclock the GPU or the CPU to 1224. And status monitor mini, there we are. So we can see CPU at 1224, 72%. And that is how you do overclocking through the Tesla or Tesla menu and sysclock. Oh, we're just gonna go ahead and close right out of this. And the last thing that I want to cover is here, here, tri-player. Now this thing's really cool. Oh, tri-player. Oh, I stopped the sys module. Oh, well, that's bad. I should, now I'm gonna have to restart my switch. I will be right back. And we're back. So now that I have TriPlayer reloaded, so here, play a song, play a song. Oh, there's my playlist isn't loaded. So actually the first thing that you gotta do, you have to open up the Homebrew app for TriPlayer. And it's really simple to do. Just go into your Homebrew menu, give it full RAM access, and TriPlayer will load this up. I only have one playlist set up at the moment, but I, I have tons of songs on here, so I'm just going to go with the playlist that I have set up. I had to make this on the Nintendo Switch. I'm going to go with uh, what, Never Return Alive. And we're going to exit right out. And now the music should still be playing. Yep, okay, that's still playing. I have my TV on mute. So, And we can control it here. Pause, play. Next track, and next track, so yeah, all kinds of things. You can make all kinds of playlists and control them like this while you're playing games. So when you're in the middle of a game, you want to listen to some other MP3s, just go ahead, throw them on TriPlayer, and you're good to go. All right, so I think that's going to do it for... Yeah, that's going to do it for part two of my Switch custom firmware overview. Stay tuned for part three, and I hope to see you there. Thank you, and have a good one.